Welcome back, Doom Tubers. Doom Waves back here for a, another video. Today we're going to talk about a game, and I haven't beat this game, so uh, don't get that impression. But I've put about four hours into it right now, and I feel like I should talk about it. Now, there's an awful lot of hubbin and bub hubbin and bubbin going on right now about Final Fantasy XIV: Realm Reborn. Um, it's out now. Um, it's live. You know, it's an MMO. Online, of course, and there's an awful lot of people playing that game. And and while I think it's probably awesome, I haven't looked up much footage or any footage actually. I haven't looked up anything on it, and I'm sure that it's awesome. But it's just it just doesn't have much draw to me, and I don't know why. I think it's just you you put that stamp of MMO on a game, and I I kind of cringe and I kind of want to avoid it. Um, I have a somewhat addictive personality, and. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to play any MMOs. I just don't want to do it. So, that said, uh, you know, of course, power to the people that are playing. Power to the people that are playing Final Fantasy XIV. That's fine, and dandy. Uh, but with all that hubbin and bubbin, uh, I felt like I really needed to play a console game for some reason because I haven't really, like, really sunk my teeth into a console game in a while. So I started playing Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for the GameCube. This is an interesting uh, game for me to jump into, actually, because I, I have so many of the Final Fantasy uh, numbered games that I haven't played yet. Uh, but this game is pretty different. It's a, First of all, it's an action RPG, uh, and I use the term RPG lightly. It is an action game um, set in a faux Final Fantasy world. I mean, it's got some Final Fantasy things in it and I've heard lots of reviews and stuff you know pretty much everybody bashes this game and and uh, while I don't I haven't heard too many people just flat out say that they hate it they can't stand it uh, but I have heard a lot of people say uh, that the uh, single player campaign is kind of boring and kind of just drug out and I, I could see that I could see what they mean um, if you're familiar with the game, uh, if you've played it before, uh, this isn't really a review. And of course, it's not going to have any spoilers in it. Um, if you've played the game before, I am through the first year. So, it gives you an idea of kind of where I'm at uh, with the game. Kind of kind of set up the story for you. You are this character. Uh, you get to choose your, your race and... Uh, your outfit, male or female, you're gonna kind of get to choose what you look like, and you can choose from any one of these different races. And uh, I'm not sure what they're all called. They all have strange names. It says it in the manual, actually. I guess I'll go ahead and take that out of there because this is actually, uh, this is you know back when they made really good manuals for games. <laughs> it's uh, pretty informative. I actually uh, did uh, take this manual out when I was setting up my character. Uh, there's four tribes: the Clavats, C-L-A-V-A-T-S. The Lil Lilties, those are the short looking dudes, uh, the Ukes, and the Selkies. I chose a Clavit, which is the first class. Uh, that's basically the closest to what you would consider like a, a human type class, I suppose. Of, human of sorts, I guess. And then there's your, your Lilites or Lilties, <laughs> little short dudes, look kind of like Moogles, but they're not. Uh, then you've got the Ukes, which are these funky-looking, bird-looking people. And then the uh, Selkies are more of like a, a tribal-type uh, race. Uh, so yeah, each um, each tribe has their, their high points, of course. You know, so, some specialty for the Clavits is uh, defense and offense for the, the Lilties and magic for the Ukes and agility for the, the Selkies and they have like different you know things that they're good at so basically you could choose um, a class or a, a race uh, to fit your, your play style you know basically how, how you play um, and I just chose the, the, the first one um, even though defense isn't necessarily uh, my, my strong point and uh, I think spell casting was another one of their their high points and I'm not usually too into that either especially because the the, the uh, spell casting is a little wonky see that's that's the the, the thing about this game too um, I guess I should finish uh, setting up the story for you you, you pick a character um, 
and you set off on a journey to collect myrrh, which is you extract it from these uh, trees that are you know throughout the land, and uh, in order to do this, like you have to go find the tree, and usually there's a, you know always a boss guarding it, you know, and you have to defeat the boss and, and harvest your drop of myrrh into this little chalice thing that you have to carry around. That's like the biggest pain in the butt too. It's like you got to carry this chalice thing around. Uh, luckily, um, in the single player mode, they give you a a Moogle who follows you around and helps you carry this thing so you can fight battles and stuff while it's carrying this thing. Otherwise, if the the multiplayer, you know, it's a, it's local multiplayer, you know, one GameCube, you can plug in a bunch of Game Boy Advances and play uh, multiplayer with this game. And I think if you're playing multiplayer, one of the characters that you're using, you know, from two to four, however many you're using, one of the characters has to be carrying this chalice because it puts like this circle around you that's guarding you from this element of some sort that's toxic to you in the world and uh, you're collecting this myrrh to take back to these uh, crystals that are located in the villages that protect the villages from this weird element. It's kind of a confusing story at first, and I'm still not really into it. I'm really not playing it that much for the story. Obviously, I haven't been following along that well. Uh, but basically, I mean, you, you're you going to collect a year's worth supply of this, this myrrh uh, to protect your village. And you go and fight monsters. Um... Controls are really kind of wonky. That's actually uh, kind of the struggle point for me. For one, you have to deal with that uh, chalice thing. And uh, you can only go so far ahead of this Moogle thing because it's really slow. Um, and then when you have to carry the chalice, you can't swing your sword or do anything. And uh, you walk slower too. So, like, so now you've slowed down because you're carrying this heavy chalice thing. And you have to put it down in order to fight enemies, and you can only go as far as the little circle that's spread around you. So that's kind of weird, but I, I, I get it. Uh, I, you know, obviously it would be just a, a, a tidbit faster if you had multiplayer, and that's really what the forte of this game is, I think. I think if, uh, if I did have, uh, you know, two or another person or two more people or three more people playing with, um, and you kind of see, you know, it's got... Game Boy Advance uh, SPs used as controllers. Um, I think, of course, you know, it would be a little bit better. But overall, I, I'm really not. Uh, I'm really not turned off by it. Um, I don't know. The the spell casting is kind of awkward. Because you have to, like, you have to use the L and R buttons to cycle through your command list, and uh, attack and defense are like defaulted to two of your commands, and then you're allowed to assign uh, spells or items to one, the two other slots. So you can put, you know, a, a cure spell and a uh, an elemental uh, spell in those slots. And then you have to cycle through them using the L and R buttons, you know, one direction or the other direction. And uh, then you have to hold down the A button and then move the analog stick or the D-pad, whichever one you want to use, and to aim it. It, like, puts a little target on on the screen and you have to aim who you, wanna, <laughs> who you want it to go to. Um, and same with like the cure magic, you know, you hold down the button, and then when the when the little crosshairs pop up, you hold it over yourself, and then let go. So it's kind of a weird thing. And when you're using your attack, you can do a focus attack, which is like a stronger attack. Same deal. Like you hold down the button, and then move the little crosshair to aim at who you want to. And I, I didn't mention it, it's isometric, so you're looking kind of uh, not really top down, but not really side view either. Kind of, kind of like this. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's. I think the game looks great, and like I said, I really am enjoying the gameplay, even though the the controls are just a little weird. Um, so far, not like totally game breaking. Once you get used to it, uh, if you can, if you can, you know, play it long enough to get used to it, 
I mean, it, there are parts of it that are, are pretty charming. Um, everything moves kind of slow in this game. I, I've got it on in the background. You can kind of hear the music. It's got like a renaissance uh, feel to it. Like in the, the village that you're in, like after you collect the first year's worth of myrrh, this isn't really a spoiler, after you collect the first year's worth of myrrh, they have like the, the, the ceremony and it followed by a festival and they're playing like the little little uh, Irish uh, flutes and stuff and you can just you see them like dancing their jigs and stuff in town. So it's really it's really got like a renaissance feel to it, which is fine. I really enjoy that. Um, it's it's uh, taking a step away from the uh, sort of cyberpunk uh, that is uh, cyberpunk or steampunk that is in a lot of Final Fantasy games. Not all of them, I don't think. Obviously not the early ones. Uh, the really early ones, but you know, you know, you get what I'm saying. If you're a fan of the the series, you kind of get understand what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, this so far, this is there's no technology at all in this. I mean, your uh, your your caravan, you've got a, a covered wagon uh, pulled by some sort of creature, and you're fighting, you know, with with magic and swords and stuff like that. Um. I don't. I think I looked up on howlongtobeat.com. I think this game takes roughly, you know, give or take twenty hours uh, to beat, and I am now four hours into it. I really don't know how long, how you know, I don't know how long it'll take me to beat this game. Uh, but so far, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, I I plan on continuing at least for now. Um, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to to dip my toes into the uh, the world of Final Fantasy uh, Crystal Chronicles, the, kind of the uh, the uh, action RPG, cuz or once again loosely saying RPG action game uh, cousin of the real Final Fantasy series. Um, I forgot to open this beer earlier because uh, I was going to open it and c uh, tell you guys what it is. Uh, at the start of this video, uh, this is a beer that uh, Dustin Christ uh, did a drinking with Dustin about a year ago, and I wanted to try it really bad then. And uh, it's a seasonal beer, and it went away, of course. I never did find it. But when I was on vacation last week, I did pick up a six pack and drank five of them on vacation and brought one home. It is Newcastle Werewolf for a limited time. You can look at the label there. It's kind of a cool uh, Halloween-ish theme. It's a blood red ale. And, uh, you know, he told me, he did it in the Drinking With Dustin video, and he even said in the video and said to me, even personally, said, you know, it's really not that good. And, uh, you know, they were right. Yeah, he was right. And uh, the other people that have had it were right. It's really not that good. <laughs> if you're a fan of... Uh, Newcastle Brown Ale, I mean, you might like it. I, I like Newcastle Brown Ale a lot. It's a really good beer, but uh, this werewolf, it's it's okay. It's not wonderful, but it, it's okay. And it claims to be blood red, and it's not really that red. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's an odd, odd brew. We'll say that. It's not bad. But I did drink uh, a, a few the, the night that I that I bought them, and it was like really. I was done with it <laughs> after that, but I didn't want to waste this one because I did want to do a video talking about it. Yay, beer! But uh, anyhow, uh, spoiler alert for a future pickup video. Uh, I do have a copy of uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Ring of Fate uh, for the DS coming soon, and uh, I know that game gets bashed quite a bit too. I've heard you know mixed reviews talking about how maybe it's a lot of way in a lot of ways improved upon this one because I think it's the one that the one that follows right after this one. I don't think they have anything to do with each other, but it's the next game in the Crystal Chronicles series. Um, I hear it's improved in some ways and kind of takes a step back in other ways. That's okay because I was just really, I'm just really interested in playing it uh, because it's an action RPG and it's on the DS and 
I absolutely love the DS. And yeah, that that that's a fact. That's a fact, Jack. So anyway, that's all I really had to talk about. I just wanted to talk about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles a little bit. Odd game in not really a Final Fantasy game per se. Uh, it's it's a cousin. <laughs> I mean, it just it's just awkward. That it, I mean, the whole thing. The whole thing about it is awkward. The fact that it's on the GameCube is awkward. The fact that the rest of the games in the series, you know, are touted as just horrible. I don't know. I, I've heard different things. Some people say the DS ones are better. Some people say that the Wii ones are better. I think one of them is actually on both. I can't remember what it's called. Something about Echoes. I think it's on both, but I don't know if it's the same game. Or if there's like big differences. There's Ring of Fates and on the DS, and then there's Crystal Bearers on the Wii, and then there is some one about the Echoes, whichever one that is, is on both systems. Anyway, I don't know. I'm gonna quit yapping now. Thanks for watching. Doom Waves out!